All right, you grab your glue, glue all, whatever. Typically just that. Open it up, get a cap, about yay big, whatever you want to use, a little thimble, who cares, and uh, fill it up. And then you set it down to wherever you're starting to work at. So we're going to be adding ballast all right here and to the track bed itself. You can see where I ran out of the actual gray and I started using a gray blend and I screwed up. So I mixed what remaining gray I had with my gray blend. Now I'm using a dog bowl, but that's all I need anyways. And then you just use a dog bowl or whatever, some kind of thing. You know, spoon. A one inch brush. And then you also have your whatever, your water jug. And here's my mixture, my spray on mixture, whatever, same thing. And then you just get like a little, how, how many does this get? Quarter inch? Whatever, quarter inch, number eight brush on whatever from uh, Michael's. You just wipe it off of your thing, wipe off the excess water. And then you can go in here and go. And you try to coat the outside beveled edge of the track bed. And just coat it and get a good. I usually do about a. Um, I always hit the ties, but it's no big deal. For me, it's not a big deal because I'm not doing a super professional NHRMA or whatever the heck the standard is. We do about, uh, I'd say a 12 inch section. And I pick up a lot of the ground clutter I've already done. Uh, but whatever, we can mask over it with the ballast, it's no big deal. So we just keep it doing this. We're not making happy trees or happy clouds. We're just making some happy, evenly spread glue. And that's all we're doing. And you just get a, a good uniform coat. Try to fill in all the voids. Where the foam sticks out doesn't have good uniform coverage, so there you go. Uh, for the water, instead of brushing the water, you grab your spoon, get a shovel full, and just sprinkle her all along the section you just did. And you get your one inch brush. And just slowly spread it out. Trying to get a keep along that beveled edge. Try to keep a beveled edge. It's kind of difficult, but and then once you spread it all out, you can come off over here and it's just you can go against the rail, hit the ties, pull and gently pull. I'm barely touching the actual ballast, but gently pull it off the ties, make it a little bit realistic, and you can push it on the ground cover with just the end of the brush, pull it down a little bit here, try to find that beveled edge, push it back again, same thing. So. That part's done. We're going to take our special mixture, which is in a Tunisian gelato friggin ice cream container, whatever. Who cares? It's just a one pint thing. You mark it off about yay high. I think that's 100 milliliters. You fill that with glue, and then you grab your repurposed hand soap container with dish soap in there, give it a couple of squirts, fill up the rest of it, 400 milliliters or so of warm water to the top, almost to the top, 
about four, yeah, 500, 400 milliliters in this right about here. And you just, and you, and you screw it on and shake it up and get a good thing going on. Anyways, so you open that up. And you take your eyedropper. Eyedropper's super cheap, so you can get up anywhere. You can get them. Basically, I go to Michael's. It's usually it as a woman's craft store, but I got a lot of good guy stuff, too. You know what to look for. So you just take your eyedropper. And since it has this up in there, with a good mixture of water, basically 70-30 mix. You just spread it right on there. And it just soaks right in. Right, let's see. Hopefully I can get this stupid GoPro to work. Alright. So we're on our third pass. Spread it right against the rail. It'll um, like soak down, gravity feed, and so reduced surface tension is going to soak right into the rocks. So you just do it like that. And since this part of the track also needs ballast between the rails, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Just a little bit of a thing right there. <sighs> Grab your one inch brush again and get the crap off of it. And just do that. Uh, if you look at my other sections of track, I didn't learn the proper method until just uh, last week. I have another video on my channel that has the building of this layout and then laying ballast. And you can kind of see where I messed up. Uh, I was able to go back over it. And do a better thing, and then, and then I found the mixture, the mixture tutorial for actually making your own basic scenic cement because this is so much cheaper than actually buying the stuff, the pints, the half pints of the uh, scenic cement from Woodland Scenics. We can do that, but I'd put a little bit too much on so you see it's not soaking down as as well. So you kind of have to spread it up with your finger. And it'll, it will dry clear, so it's no big deal. Wipe your finger off. But this will, this will all dry clear. So it will look just like this track, and this track, and all this. You can kind of see where I have some gaps I got to fill in. I got backfill, some of the center track. I got some more excess that's coming across here, so it doesn't look so realistic, but... I take you around to where my earlier ballast laying experiments didn't really work too well. So over here by the locomotive shed and where I'm gonna put the power power station. This is all my old ballast laying. So you can see that I had nothing to hold it onto onto the actual track surface, actually onto the uh, what do you call that? The track bed. So I have it right in between the rails pretty well. And I got it okay here, but I didn't have anything. I didn't have the Elmer's glue, and I didn't find out about the Elmer's glue until much later. To go ahead and coat that with Elmer's glue, brush, brushing it on with like a quarter inch brush, and then sprinkling the ballast on, and then spreading it out, and then putting the mixture on to solidify it in place. But you can see where I don't have a good beveled edge, and I have a lot of clumping. And it doesn't look very good over there. And then we come to where I started learning the, the professional way of doing it. Well, the, uh, the semi-professional good way of doing it. This is all right here. You can see kind of the bevel of the edge. We got this part right here. This is actually not bevel. This is just a flat sheet of uh, track bed for my switch. But you can kind of see where I'm going with this. You got Got a nice beveled edge here, and this is all solidified. This is actually really, really robust. It actually feels like coarse concrete if you ever rub your hand across that kind of stuff. But you put your fingers in, I'm pushing. I got about maybe 15 pounds of force. Nothing on the fingers, maybe one. 
Now if I do that over here where I screwed up and I didn't do it the most professional way, I do it the same way, press down about 15, there you go. It's not solidified, so I'm going to have to redo this section again. But, anyways, so that's me laying ballast. I've gotten to about that part of the layout. And I've always been doing, um, I started laying ballast before I laid ground, ground clutter. And I really shouldn't have done that. I really should have did my ground cover first and then did my and then did the uh, ballast. Otherwise, you wouldn't have things hard and mess, but you wouldn't have it look like this. All over here, and it's all ugly. But you can see where I'm starting to improve it. I don't know how well I'm gonna freaking I'm not gonna blend that um, gray blend which is, has stark contrast to just the gray. So, local hobby shop ran out of the gray and I didn't want to order it. It's kind of, it's 14 bucks wherever I buy it at. Like 12 bucks for the shakers, for the ground cover, and then the ballast is like $15 there at Hobby Town, whatever it is, Hobby Town USA. And then on, online it would be like, I'd say probably about, I'd say probably about, Let's see, about the same price, maybe 12 bucks or something, maybe $3 cheaper, but the shipping gets you. The shipping is quite um, unreasonable because flat rate shipping from Woodland Scenics is uh, $5. So your $12, your $3 savings, your $3 savings on the Woodland Scenics shaker or bag, bag the other stuff to fill your shaker is offset by the shipping so you're better off just going to the hobby shop and buying it there so my mistake so i have a whole basically a whole shaker of this garbage and i gotta see if i can get another gray not just another gray so i can blend it a little bit better so it looks a little bit, a little bit better i can get my airbrush i'm gonna get an airbrush kit and give a slight airbrush effect on it gray it out a little bit more but yeah the uh the mixture will solidify in probably 45 minutes half an hour will start to solidify depending on how much you put down if you put down a lot like i do 45 minutes to an hour so that's how she goes right now and do a little quick video a little quick shot. There's my locomotive shed. I have, uh, I have, I believe, nine LEDs in it, wired up in parallel. They're only amber. They're amber uh, 1.8s. So you can get right in there. And I got my one steam engine I really don't use too much, and my old DC locomotive. That's worse than Tyco, I think. I'm not sure which one that is. It's an old Bachman from when I was a kid. But yeah, and then you have your thing, our, our siding for the power plant. It's gonna go right here. It's Northern Light and Power. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I certainly did.